hello and welcome to one and all in today's class we will discuss about the causes and measures for overpopulation in india okay so we have already seen that we are in the second stage of demographic transition and india is the second most highly populated country in the world currently almost 17% of the world's population are in india sharing only around 2 to 2.5% of the world's geographical area and approximately around 7 to 7.5% of the world's gdp so uh, there is a, a sort of population explosion in the country so let us check out what are all the causes and what are all the remedial measures undertaken to control the growth of population in the country okay so let us check the causes and measures side by side so that it will be uh, easy to understand or, or the concept will be clear okay so when we would take the causes normally in any country the causes for overpopulation i mean i already mentioned that uh, the growth rate of population is depending upon the birth rate and death rate so it is mainly due to high birth rate and a relatively lower death rate and also another reason that could cause a, a sizable increase in the population of the country could be there is something called as immigration people immigrating from one country to another country but as far as india is concerned we need not to have to worry about the third cause third factor immigration mostly the problem of overpopulation in india is mainly because of the high birth rate and relatively low death rate okay so let us check out what are the reasons factors affecting the high birth rate and what are all the factors causing the relatively low death rate in the country okay so now so first one causes for high birth rate in our country so whatever the causes the measures also to, should be taken accordingly okay so measures to control the birth rate so there are two factors that is affecting the high birth rate first one is the economic factors and the second one is the social factors so accordingly the measures also should be taken in such a way that it is the economic measures and social measures so the first and foremost economic factors uh, economic factor that is affecting high birth rate is something called as the you have already seen this this feature of indian economy predominance of agriculture so when i say uh, predominance of agriculture by this time you must be knowing that the major share of uh, national income or most importantly the majority of the people are depending upon agriculture for their livelihood so agriculture is dominating in employment so the predominance of agriculture that is one of the special characteristic of uh, indian agriculture okay now what is the connection between predominance of agriculture and the rise in the birth rate of a country so one uh, one thing is agriculture in our country is we have already seen that it is they still use the traditional methods of cultivation or in other words it is more labor intensive so since it is more labor intensive and also we have already seen that there is a sort of disguised unemployment prevailing in agricultural sector so the farmers uh, they think that one more person in the family additional member in the family is considered as an asset one more person to work come and work in the field so since they don't uh, send their kids for education or anything they don't consider it as an economic burden means in fact on the other hand they consider the additional person in the family is an asset for the family asset in the sense that one more person to come and work in the field so they don't 
realize that it is decreasing their standard of living. And as majority of the sections of the population in our country, they keep depending on agriculture. And on the top of it, they cannot afford that modern methods of cultivation. So it is uh, labor intensive oriented. So this, uh, the, they think that one more person is a benefit. So they don't try to restrict the size of their family. So that is one of the main reasons for uh, high birth rate, in, mostly in the rural areas, okay? So in order to rectify this mistake, what the government has to do, that is the economic measure. So the government should see to it that instead of agriculture, the people are depending on industries. So for that, what the government has to do or what the country has to do, expansion of industrial sector. So expansion of uh, industrial sector, we all know that employment in industries, it is not as easy as em getting employed in the agricultural sector. So the employment in industry requires qualification, isn't it? It requires skill, it requires efficiency. So automatic, and also uh, it is one more child in the family who is employed in the industrial sector, they will realize that it is decreasing their standard of living, that awareness will be there. So they will automatically try to restrict the size of their family. So one in agricultural sector, one more child is considered as an economic asset. But the people who are uh, employed in the industrial sector, they consider one more child as an economic burden. So automatically they will try to, because it decreases their standard of living. So automatically they will try to reduce the size of the family. So instead of predominantly in agricultural sector, if the country deviates to predominantly industrial sector, automatically the growth rate of population in the country will be controlled. So again, we are going back to the same first topic, why the structural changes have to be initiated in the country. I mentioned that over a period of time, the country has to shift from agricultural sector to industry and further to tertiary sector, isn't it? So these are all the reasons. So one of the main reasons is that as long as the country is depending on agricultural sector, they don't realize the problem of overpopulation. The families don't understand the problem of increase in the number of members in their respective families. So once the country shifts to the industrial sector, even major percentage of the population are employed in the industrial sector, automatically they themselves will try to restrict the size of their family. Okay, so that is the first cause and measure. And then second, so second cause that is affecting the high birth rate is the something called as urbanization or in, uh, we can say that low urbanization. So low urbanization, definitely if the agriculture is dominating, then automatically, which is in the rural area, then the urban and majority of the population are depending on agriculture, then automatically the urbanization in the country will be poor, isn't it? So low urbanization in the country, uh, what is the reason here? Because industries are not developed that much. So low urbanization due to slow industrialization in the country. So if the pace of industrialization in the country is very slow, automatically the urbanization will also be low in the country. So again, going back to the same thing, more and more people are depending, even staying in the rural areas and automatic, depending on agriculture, the same problem is happening. Okay. So again, the first measure, slow uh, expanding the industrial sector. That will be the solution for this, increasing the urbanization in the country also. Because urbanization in the urban areas, most of the people will be depending on either in the secondary sector or in the tertiary sector. So, which the prevents the um, one more member in the family. It will become an economic burden for the people who are living in the cities or in the urban areas compared to the people who are living in the rural areas, okay? So in order for this, what the country, the measure is, uh, is the government has to, the country has to increase the uh, urbanization or 
the country has to what they have to do creation of indirectly if the employment opportunities is created then it will increase the urbanization and at the same time restrict the dependence on agricultural sector automatically the population of the country will also be controlled so increasing the employment opportunities so where the country has to the employ uh, increase the employment opportunities both in cities and also in the, not only in cities it, the employment opportunities should also be created in the villages okay so first the cities how the employment opportunities can be created in uh, cities only by expanding industries okay and another thing is if the industries are expanded automatically there will be urbanization isn't it so they both go hand in hand industrialization and the urbanization they both go hand in hand if the industries are expanded in the country then urbanization will take place in the country so if the urbanization takes place and then there will be we, we will have all the problems of urbanization like housing problem will be there if more people are uh, staying in the urban areas if more and more people are shifting from rural areas to the urban areas then the urban areas will be crowded so we will have all the problems of urbanization so if the country tries to increase the uh, uh, pace of industrialization if the country tries to expand the urbanization in our in then all the problems of urbanization will erupt in the country like problems of housing problems of drinking water sanitation all these consequences will be arising so now since all these consequences are ar arising people will know that if there one more person or we we have to face all these problems so automatically if they are staying in the urban areas or if people from the rural area if they shift from urban rural area to urban area they will realize that if more and more members are there in their families then they will have to undergo all these problems then automatically they will reduce the size of their family and also it is i told you the employment opportunities has to be have to be expanded not only in cities but also in villages so if the in the because if the employment opportunities are expanded only in cities all the rural folk will be migrating to the urban areas so again we will have all the consequences of urbanization and it is not possible also to provide employment opportunities to all the extra labor force in the rural areas so the alternative method what the government has to do is the government or the country they have to see to it that in the villages itself more and more people could be employed by employ uh, starting something called as the alternative employment opportunities alternative employment opportunities should be created to the rural people by starting something called a cottage and village industry all the handicrafts industries so by starting all the cottage and will handicraft industries so they need not have to depend on agriculture only now so if the alternative employment opportunities are available in the rural areas itself then what is happening one thing the disguised unemployment will not be there in the agricultural sector and also people will not shift from rural areas to the urban areas they will get employed in the rural areas in the villages itself and we will not have the problem of urbanization also okay so if the so these are all the measures the country has to take so they can they have to create employment opportunities both in cities cities by expanding the industrialization and in the villages by uh, starting the cottage or the village industries so that people the rural people they will find the alternative employment they need not have to depend only on agriculture okay so that is the second measure the country can do okay then the third cause is the poverty the third economic factor affecting uh, re, uh, re, uh, sorry causing the overpopulation in the country is poverty actually 
it is for why the poverty normally what is the reason for, for poverty we all say that because of big family the poverty the size of the family is big so the poverty is happening but this is it is not uh, it is other way around big family is not the cause of sorry so big family is not the cause of poverty in our country it is other way around so as i mentioned it is the other way around that is what poverty is the reason for having big family so just now i mentioned the poor people they consider one more member in the family uh, it is an asset for them they don't consider it as an economic burden so all cities they are poor so they want as a asset they think that having an additional child to work in the field and also in the rural area there is a problem of and also there is high infant mortality rate so uh, they are not sure okay so because of the high infant mortality rate and because of poverty one more child they consider it is an asset for them or to in their because of the high infant mortality rate at least one child will survive and they will take they'll take care of the parents in their old age so because of all these reason they uh, try they, they keep on expanding the size of the family so in order to prevent this kind of attitude in order to rectify this uh, attitude this wrong attitude of the people what has to be done so that what measure has to be taken so it has to be seen that there is equitable or proper distribution of income and also all those measures should be taken to remove poverty all those employment programs or whatever it is that takes to uh, removal of poverty so if one thing if there is a equal distribution of income and also if the poorer sections of the people if they are provided certain kind of jobs and also if the poorer sections of the people if they are provided certain basic facilities basic amenities so once they have the taste of the better standard of living then they will then then only they will realize that one more member in the family it is an economic burden so as long as they are not having any basic amenities in their life basic facilities in their life they will not realize that one more member is a burden so once they have the taste of that better facilities a slight improvement in their standard of living so how how there will be the slight improvement in the standard of living only by they have to come out of that poverty at least slightly okay so we have seen what is the meaning of inclusive growth in the uh, first chapter isn't it what is the meaning of inclusive growth the government the as of now uh, the poorer sections of the population they are receiving only 2% or 3% of the share in the national income but if the same percentage is increased to at least to 5% or 10% even though that is low if the poorer sections of the people receive that is equitable distribution of income so, i mean at least not exactly but at least more share of the national income is going to the poorer sections of the population so compared to 2% or 3% share in the national income if they receive 5% or to 10% share in the national income so that uh, the basic amenities will increase for them they will have some better facilities in their home better standard of living than what they were in the previous uh, condition isn't it so once they get the taste of better standard of living once they get the taste of better amenities in life then automatically they will understand that if they are having that one more child in their family those they, have, they will not be able to enjoy that better facilities so automatically they themselves will try to restrict the size of their family so put it in words so if these program these programs i mean whatever that uh, measures for equitable distribution of income or for the removal of poverty so that's what i mean if these programs are implemented properly and if 
the poorer sections of the people get used to do the most important gets used to better facilities so once they have the taste of that better uh, facilities in their life then automatically they will restrict the size of their family okay. so automatically they will restrict the size of their families isn't it so these are all the economic causes and economic measures now let's move to the affecting the high birth rate now let us move to the uh, the next one the second factor that is affecting the high birth rate is the social factors so on the left hand side uh, it is so uh, this is causes and here social measures okay so the social factors we have uh, so many social factors that is resulting in high birth rate first and foremost universality of marriages so in our universality of so in our country uh, this one is considered as a necessity it is mandatory for everyone okay and also relatively what you call it as prevalence of lower age of marriage of course periodically the government keeps on uh, increasing the marriageable age but then it is not that much effective i will explain to you what i will give you the data so this is again another reason and the third one is religious and social superstitions so what are the uh, religious and social uh, superstition thinking that children is uh, children are gift of gift of god okay so uh, we should not do anything and then join what do you say prevalence of so this is also very common in our country prevalence of joint family system so the problem with the joint family system is the economic burden is shared so no don't know who is working who is sharing the burden okay so this is also very common practice in our country and the most important lack of education and direct outcome of uh, lack of education is lack of use of any preventive method so these are all the social factors that is causing the high birth rate in the country so now this itself is providing the solution isn't it so what are all the measures uh, that have to, have to be implemented to rectify this so the first and foremost education so if the education facilities are uh, improved so if more and not education in the sense that not only the basic or the primary level of education even the higher level of education should also be improved in the country so what happens at first one the basic education the attitudes of the people will change the awareness in the country will increase and if if they take the higher education so if uh, more people are going to university uh, studying up to the university level and the graduation post graduation or even higher than that then automatically the marriages will be delayed so they will have the better awareness the better under understanding the attitudes will change and also the uh, it will delay the marriage so that is one of the most important uh, merit of education and one of the most important uh, what do you say very significant solution for the to arrest the growth rate of population so when and in this education 
it is not only the male education it is not the general literacy rate in the country the focus should be given to women education so the the next one is the next remedial measure is status of women so status of an as, as far as the current uh, uh, literacy rate is concerned so the data shows that is in as per the 2011 census the total literacy rate in the country is 74% but out of this the male literacy is 82% but the female literacy is much lower 65.5% so so what has to be done so the the focus should shift to giving uh, improving the literacy rate of the females in the country so not only the improving the literacy rate and also equal opportunities should be given to all the positions all the job job opportunities or any professional anything the equal opportunities should be given to females in the country also see we have seen isn't it what is the gender development index and most importantly gender empowerment measure so the females should be empowered in the country so they should also be given the equal opportunities in the, in the political participation economic part participation the share of uh, national income for females etc so this will be a, if the uh, status of women in the country is improved in the country this will be the one of, it will be a direct attack on the problem of overpopulation in the country okay and the next most important measure is raising the age of marriage so raising the age of marriage of course uh, i'll write in a fresh page so this raising the age of marriage so the government passed um, an act called as the child marriage restraint act so in 1903 so in 1903 the marriageable age, the legal marriageable age for girls was 15 years and for males it was 18 years and again in 1978 the marriageable age was increased to 18 years for females and for males increased to 21 years and 2001 it is increased even slightly to 18.3 years and for males 22.6 years okay so what is happening the periodically uh, under this act the government keeps on increasing the marriageable age in the country but even today i mean as per the survey conducted between 9, 2019 so it was found that still 25% of women and around 15% of men in the country they still marry before this legal age announced by the government so what is happening even though whatever the measures are being uh, undertaken by the country there is not that much of cooperation from the uh, citizens of the country so i mean it still we have a long way to go so that's why i always keep saying that, that to change the attitude of the people the social factors is the very very uh, difficult one okay so the social factors is something very difficult to change the Uh, i mean it, it will take a long time for the people for people to change their attitudes okay so still we are moving in that direction but as i said still a long way to go oh, anyway so these are all the causes for uh, high causes and measures for high the birth rate in the country okay and we'll see the quickly we will see what are the causes for decline in death rate so the second finish with the birth rate causes for 
decline in death rate. So the first one is elimination of famines. So earlier we experienced the famine condition 19 uh, 49 and all we experienced earlier we experienced the famines drought conditions which proved to be fatal and during the uh, time of British rule the famous Bengal famine so during this period and all uh, the late 1930s during those period and all it was so severe most of the people uh, died because of famine conditions but after over a period of time as the economic development takes place the country was able to control the famines and the drought conditions. And India is almost, India is self-sufficient in food grains. In spite of the steaming millions of population in our country, we are self-sufficient in food grain. So that kind of large scale problem is not arising in our country as it happened once upon a time. So this to a certain extent, it declined the death rate in the country. Okay. And the next control of epidemics. So control of epidemics, once upon a time, more than 40 to 50 percent of the population, they were dying because of malaria, malaria, cholera. They all were fatal once upon a time. But now most of the uh, fate, all those fatal diseases, they have been found a cure. They have been found the vaccination. Smallpox was eradicated, even malaria, cholera, all the other uh, fatal diseases, we have found a cure. So because of that also, the death rate uh, decreased in the country. And apart from that, there are certain other factors as the economic development takes place. The One of the measures which I was mentioning to you, equitable distribution of income and poverty, isn't it? So like, uh, you know, people get better uh, facilities in the sense that proper drinking water supply, sanitation. So the, call, the death rate which was happening because of no proper drinking water, no sanitation, proper sanitation, hygienic, not proper, no proper medical facilities. So all those have been controlled. So because of all these reasons, the death rate in the country decreased. So proper drinking water, better sanitation and hygienic conditions. And all those programs to uh, eradicate poverty, all those have been, and of course, even the a process of education in the country. So because of all those development, uh, there was a slight improvement in the standard of living of the people and people were able to have that accessibility to better medical care. So because of all these reasons, the death rate in the country decreased. But the social factors still continue to be high. So that's why we are having the population explosion in the country, okay? And in order to control the social factors, something the one of one main measure which the government had done in our country is the family planning measures which i'll explain to you in my next class okay so this is in the previous class when i was explaining to you about the theory of demographic transition where india stands i told you between 1951 to 1981 the growth rate was 2.14% which was a record growth rate in our country and later it decreased to 1.64%. So the reason for the decrease from 2.14 to 1.6 is because of this family planning measures adopted in the country, okay? Anyway, that at this point, it, I will explain to you in the next class, okay? So if you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. And if you have any doubts or any comments or any suggestions, please mention in the comment box. So until my next class, take care, bye-bye.